I'm all we know. Glad you learned. Uh, will we ever learn <laughs> why you and I have this horrible habit? And I feel I'm like it's our fault at this point. Around the entire week. Yeah, because last week, out of seven maps, five of the ones we did were Oregon. Out of I seven six maps, maps, right? Uh, I think it was five of seven in the end. Oh, I think okay. we had a club and we had a consulate. You know what? I will just Google the amount of maps we did last week. Yeah. Either way, we find ourselves, look at this, back on club. Look at that. Slightly different bands. This time round, the Maverick is gone, followed up by the Thermite, the double hard, but you still have a lot. And you have Thatcher on the board. That does allow you some of that room to play, some of that room to cause some destruction. There goes that Valkyrie, that potential problem operator that's otherwise going to be a bit of a problem for teams that might otherwise use a lot of use of those C4s and those cams, as we've seen demonstrated pretty expertly recently. And here is the follow-up mirror off to an operator who was allowed through in the fight alongside and with, obviously, G2's roster and the setup that they could have, but also from that point and that perspective and position, a slight bit of a change. Le Cube. Le Cube. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. It could be alluding to the pre-match chat, where they were talking about Cactus being sent to Stade de France in a uh, little box. Maybe. But I'm not sure if that's the case. <laughs> um, that's something we might, well, you know, we might need to ask them during the post-match interview to see what Le Cube was about. Milos, take notes. Le Cube. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's just educating Milos. <laughs> Sometimes we just gotta, you just gotta, there's fire back at Milos every now and then. Especially if you get clubhouse three times in a day. Sometimes you're just forced to. Either way. We're getting back in, gym bedroom, first side to come up. I believe this is what Jess said earlier. This seems to be the, what is it? Achilles heel, I think it is, of uh, Navi. I'm not sure if that's the right wording for it. I'm pretty sure you would be able to yeah. tell me. Yeah, the Achilles heel is the weak spot. It's the, you can... Yeah, we call it uh, the Achilles space. Does that translate for Achilles heel? Well, I don't know if, oh. if the last part goes to heel, but uh, I assume it does. <laughs> that's yeah, what, that's so I was like. I'm not sure if it's the, the right word. But. The, <laughs> the mythology is that Achilles was a legendary yeah, fighter, and, and couldn't be stopped, but his heel was his weak spot. Yeah, and yeah I, okay. Why? I don't know why, Milo. Because he made me. a deal and the drop... No, the drop was Hercules. Oh. Yeah. We're listening, by the way. He was held. That's it. Oh, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that okay, is. So yeah. he was held by his heel when he was dipped into the but river. Was he sticks. held by one heel or by two heels? Either way, because then he would have two weak points. Either way, one heel. <laughs> I assume it's just one uh, one weak point. Look here at this. Talking <laughs> of, Blur has decided he wants to start intently driving his way forward. We actually saw in the background there, as the Bucks started to crack through, they looked like they wanted to reinforce the top of red, but then they pulled themselves off. I think they were concerned. Now they've, I guess, got a little bit less cover and a little bit less rotation than they might have otherwise wanted here. It means as soon as red falls, they've really got to quickly flood their way through. They're looking to see if they can drop those grenades around the side and pop that pressure and try and just Pull these bodies away. It's the start of the push. Oh, Talking God. off. Blah. Takes care of Rise. And, well, that means Bibu is instantly forced a little bit further through. Drops the shield. Pushes them into a trickier situation. P4 is there as a little modicum of support. But how long will they be there? Not very long. P4 allowed to rotate out. Quite curious. He's going to get flashed now, however. Bibu himself as well still in here. Holding for as long as he possibly can. Buying as much time for Vitality as there is to be gained. This P4 is supporting him, trying to cut down the rotation and anybody that moves through, it's a grenade. That will end the life of Bibu. Doki able to bounce it off of the little cabinet in the middle of the room quite well. This Vitality left with three members up to the five of Na'Vi, which is definitely not a great start for them. Now, 
How do they start to build behind this? Well, the pop and the spray and the attempt as the crouch crawl comes through from Blur. He's looking to try and apply some pressure secretly on the side. Sees some pings, but doesn't shoot and act upon them. Wants to try and go through the gap that's already been opened. There's the spray and the pre-fire. Would have seen the edge and the echelon of the shield, the hold on shower, but it's Doki that actually drives his way through. Shinka is able to take saves back with a great take across the long angle on two. Logic. But here, how can they get a good handle on drones in 30 seconds when Navi are still steadily collecting themselves and collaborating all across the space here? Before playing closer to gym window, Shinka right across the hallway as well. The plant in the meantime is going down and Need to make an attempt to try and stop it now. Shinka pushing in the plants. Has been cancelled. P4 managed to pick up that double kill. Now he's going to get pressure, but does oh, the frost mat will be able to shut him down. It's P4, the last man alive right now. We'll punch the hatch to try and go for the grand escape. There's only two seconds left, and Doki needs to go for the plant. He can just go up and collect the quad kill. P4 should know where he is. We'll get it as well. And that is going to be that final kill. And somehow Vitality are able to walk away with the win after being two men down and basically just a minute and 30 seconds played. That was a fantastic clutch there from P4. Obviously a little bit gifted by the frost mat that came through, but the drive there to be able to pick up the man and they didn't quite have the full cover. When you're in this four versus two situation, they sort of were able to strike. They isolated it into what was a practical two versus two. They went, well, the plant's going through. Let's try and swing around. Nath pulled up, but a second too late, and P4 was able to get the angle and get the corner there, and obviously Blur reacted just after, but with the frost mat still in place, it meant that he was a little bit unfortunately preoccupied by the damage that was otherwise done, pulled out of them, and from that point onwards, with the limitation of time to have the foresight and forethought to go, I'm going to drop out of here, yeah. I mean, just fantastic sense there. Great adaptation or great more response, really. Realizing you have that mechanical arm that is the one operator that will just one punch the hatch. Because believe it or not, every operator is capable of punching open a hatch. It just takes about 50 punches. It takes a lot something. of punches. It takes a lot of others. punches for you to, uh, yeah. to open it. Um, so, you know. Just the Rooney with the mechanical arm, of course, makes giant holes as well into the wall, has the opportunity to open it in one go and use to perfection there by P4 to use it for the grand escape, allowing him to rotate back up and secure themselves the round in the end. Okay, Vitality, a start which, to be honest, didn't really seem to go your way, but they are a team that does build momentum from the most unlikely places. and. That's sort of what you want to have against Na'Vi, who can be so quick and so swift. Obviously, Blur getting such a go opener, and then Doki being able to get a 3k just behind. We've already seen it in the honor on this map absolutely pop off in the hands of Shaiko earlier today, and Doki's going to see if he can, I guess, do a bit of repetition, because if Do Shaiko's going to do it and Rask's going to do it, why can't Doki do it? Definitely will want to. Try and equal it out. See if they can, see if he will be able to. It's at least a good start. Three kills in the first round. Fortunately, not being able to pick up the win. Doki now being tagged up from the back, I believe it is. And Bibu is uh, going to be able to find a spawn. Misses the shots there. Doki will be picked up. And Bibu literally has about 5 HP left. And the nice shot will be coming out. And yet again, well, actually, not yet again. This time, the entry will be to Vitality. That was it. It was so close to Bibu being dropped there. And to be fair to Na'Vi, they had themselves positioned perfectly. They were doing exactly what they needed to, which was force them into the rotation down and be ready to strike from lounge. They just couldn't quite connect it. And it's one of those moments that one other bullet had slipped at a slightly smoother route. It would have been their kill secured here, though. Blair is ready to stack up and try and apply some pressure onto Dirt, but is doing the same thing he did before. Get to a ready-to-aggress position and wait. Hold yourself for a little bit more of the pressure to come from the other side. Be ready to strike when the iron is, well, maybe not hot, but at least distracted by some of the other pressure that's coming through, because otherwise you know Vitality, they will quickly react and swing. The pings are coming through. Secretly wants to see if he can get an angle as they go for the swing, but he knows if he takes a step further forward, the Banshee's going to start to scream, and they'll instantly try and close down, and there's too many angles and too many eyes and ideas of how they can shut it down. 
the EMP will give them that little momentary burst, and they're going to come through with a bit of a burst of speed. It's Nath over the shoulder, gets one and gets the spray, gets behind the second box and goes for the plant. This creep up the quad wall could be monumental if they don't quite see it come through, but they get the plant off, and now they've got the cover back. P4, one more, but it's a three versus three with Cactus down, and P4 gets a second here. He's looking for a third right now. There's a big range coming from secretly on the far side, deep in oil pit. He gets in a fight with Rise, but Rise is the one that leads himself close. The swing round, 20 seconds, and a skeleton key is what he's trying to build here, waiting for the audio of the long arm. They have the cover, they have the swing. He's going to have to make a move now, but he cannot quite make yeah, it well, right. Well. Look at all of those vitality bodies. Yeah, they were waiting. They knew they had the time there. They didn't instantly need to go for that gunfight. So as soon as they realized it was inside of dirt, everybody just rotated over. I wanted to make sure to hold it. Hey, look at that. Is that Helby in That's the background? Helby. Is that Helby? Our resident Canadian has finally come to Europe. Hey, Helby. Hey, Helby. How are you doing? Well, maybe we get to speak to him in the interview if they win. That would be fun. Either way. That's a bit too far ahead, of course. <laughs> <laughs> We're two rounds deep. We're only two rounds in. But so far, both those rounds are for Vitality, and this one was a retake. It was it really a retake? They didn't really completely lost the side. It was just a bit of a sneak in plant, but you know, it's still a post plant. And you still had that man in dirt who was shut down afterwards. Four players try to go for the contest with the long arm coming in from P4, trying to make sure that that diffuser was going to be ticking down and forcing the one player left in Navi to go for the peak, to go for the fight, to go for the contest, which cost him his life in the end, but nothing else he could have really done in that case. And now, this Navi 0 to 2 off Vitality, and the next site will be played. It's going to be CCTV Cash. For some teams, the primary bomb site. For some others, it is the tertiary bomb site. So it does quite often differ, depending on the team. Something we do see more often than not nowadays, though, is the fact that no more rotation gets created inside the soft wall uh, next to the rafters. Now, this is just a line of sight. You use this line of sight to stop anybody moving in from the construction door or wall. Uh, not so much to try and challenge the plateau if it gets open. It's, mo it's more so focused towards defending from a construction site push. The big issue at Hiver is, though, if you lose complete control and you're the last man standing, you will have to jump through that window, which is not really something very favorable. As well, if Blur just used a impact on the hatch, even though having Breaching charges available to him. Yeah, I think they wanted to try and punish them with a bit of pace. There was a lot of drones and there was a lot of push and pressure. They wanted to see if they could, I guess, force anyone that might be around construction into an early sort of concerning gunfight or the alternate, which is just force them out of the range, force them out of the area, use a bit of utility and a bit of pace and say, listen, we're coming. And then Vitality got to go, OK, we're leaving. They can pull themselves back because a lot of the start of club, especially on this side, is shepherding, is pushing them towards the top of red, is pushing them towards that sort of back corner and back line where every team generally ends up falling. And the quicker you can do it, the more time you get yourself actually for what can be, at some points, a pretty tricky execute here as we can already see the stack up of Vitality started to come through. A C4 pops off but doesn't quite get the catch and Shink is going to find himself in a little bit of a tighter corner here as the second set of X Kairos pop their way around. They're getting the details on Cactus on the far side. P4's underneath and can cause some danger in just a second, but... With this frag grenade ready to bounce around the corner, here's Doki looking to see if he can just take out Shinka. It's ADS covered. There's a disc, and there's another grenade that's about to get eaten. And that one gets picked up, and I believe there's no more grenades left on Doki now, and that forces him to go for a bit more of a push through this choke point. There's still 65 seconds left on the clock, though. It's plenty of time. There's also a bit of pressure coming down from, of course, right now here on the wall, which I believe one of them is going to be opened up. The other one gets tricked. Rise will be able to get the entry frag. That is secretly gone. Smoke canisters are being popped as well to try and slow them down, and P4 will be able to strike himself as well. P4 is having an absolute screamer of an opening to this map so far. He is really dedicated into killing as many Navi players as possible, but so is Nath. He's able to drive his way in yet again. He's able to get that first body for Navi here as the push starts to come through. He's in a bit of a tight spot here. Desperately needs some support to come through from Blur or save, so we're trying to stack themselves up, sticking the plant in the meantime as Shinker and Cactus creep their way back up. Bibu goes wide, gets saved, Bibu, no gets way. another one, and it's Shinker! to lock it off for Vitality. Another round goes their way. 
with all the coaching stuff in the back. I'm all sorry. of them. I'm distracted pacing. by like three people walking past every every single time, just moving through. And in the meantime, that's exactly what Bibu did. He just went for a drive-by onto the man on the CC window, got that kill, moved in instantly, stopped that diffuser planter from going down, and all of the, after that, just that final kill to come in. 0-3 for Vitality. Navi, nowhere to be found yet on their attacks. They did get quite close, you know, they managed to dig in. Just the cover wasn't there. Uh, it wasn't enough, at least. Let's put it up like that, because the diffuser planter was able to be shut out. Of course, due to no one really being active on side of the uh, balcony near the plateau, made it difficult for uh, that cover on Bibu to be perfect. Allowed him to walk freely and swing. Pick up the kill as a result. And that means we find ourselves back in gym bedroom. It was a clutch that came through the final uh, the previous time. It was Navi with a great opening. Able to pick up two of these kills very early on. Of course, one by a grenade, a doki, the other one by just the pure gun fire. Vitality will have to be more aware of it, have to be more careful for it. And I believe we see a bit more of a heavy setup now towards the red stairs which will allow Vitality to hold onto this a little bit wider. Probably a shield will be set up right next to the rotation as well. You see it right there, Rice will be setting it up. Two ADSs will be there to cover it from any grenades or gun sixes or anything like that. And that should be making sure that Navi have a bit more of a difficult time taking control of CC Cash. Navi, this is where they started with a lot of pace, and as you said, it came down to a clutch from P4 that built the start of the Vitality momentum that's really driven them further ahead here. Blur has pulled off of the buck and found themselves more on that role of Zafia before she obviously suffers her nerf. Time to make the use of, for a lot of people, the person that sort of stepped in to replace the Ash in situations. Gun 6 round the corner will allow them a little bit more room to again force and shepherd those players potentially further out there. Curious to see if someone decides to stay behind because that was the early body. That was who Blur was able to just go deep, get a swing and a pick the same way that we've seen Vitality act over the past couple of rounds. They acted. They drove themselves through. The early canister over the top doesn't quite save the life of Bibu as that smoke is trying to hold on. P4 in the meantime gets secretly. Doki wants to hop over, doesn't want to quite get the angle and look at the hole just on the left. Rise is waiting for this body to drift in a little bit closer than they otherwise might be but the concern is coming out from the door side itself as everything is coming in a little bit concussed. Now Ducky will be aware of the man on the table and is quickly trying to find an angle as the sh feet are being shot out. P4 comes up and takes the kill. The man is absolutely on fire as Rice finally goes down at Shinka to provide the cover. It's an active two or one on three situation as P4 just swings by the window. The drive vies of Vitality are absolutely destroying Navi. And it's only up to saves now in an active 1v3. Secures the kill onto Rise. That's a start at least to this clutch, but still a minute left on that clock. No real like control really for him rather than just CC. And a drop diffuser that he needs to recover if he wants to go for a plan. But he also knows there's almost no opportunity for it going to open up the breach. He's now going to decide to potentially pick up that diffuser. Yes, he will. Realize that it's probably going to be safe and the members have returned towards the site. Makes it a little bit easier for him, but P4, of course, with that mechanical arm, could always drop that hatchet again if you do not pay attention, so they have that opportunity to rotate quickly. Saves has 30 seconds and Three bodies to find en route. They still have some holds and some sort of lockdown inside the site itself with those frost mats to play around the Lodgy side, but and a Rooney gate and a shotgun not much further away on the other side of it. There's a brief fire and comes onto the side here with a handful of seconds. They're waiting to see if they can get an exit and a little bit of a punishment, but it's all theirs. P4, I believe, is currently 11 to 1 on the fifth round. Yeah, I thought you said, why not Doki? But I think the question I mean, is, why not P4? <laughs> apparently so. It's it's a day for uh, big games to step up and players to have these huge moments. And P4 currently is dictating this and dictating the pace. He's definitely dictating it. And I had a feeling that we would get a tactical timeout from Navi. Four rounds in a row now. Vitality have managed to win. And, of course, the first one was on the back of a clutch that came through from P4. A good... 
2v4 situation that was brought back, 3v5, 2v4, back towards a 2v2 and eventually a 1v1. But now we find ourselves in a situation where Vitality is quite dominant in these rounds and currently figured out a way to get themselves four in a row. And the question is, how much further can they go? Are they going to be able to go for a complete clean sweep? Because they're only starting to grow. If you look at the drive-bys that Bibu and P4 are putting up right here, I'm I'm afraid as a Navi, uh, Navi fan. If you be, a, if I would be. A Navi That's fan. it. If you, if you're putting your Navi hat on, yeah, you're concerned because, as I pointed out, and this is a good time to take the sort of tech time out, is vitality grows in confidence. The more they, they can stick do. themselves into a game, they get more and more sort of brash and bold, and it is a roster of that terrifying mix. If not only do they have a huge amount of skill they have a huge amount of experience they have you know a long story and that sort of consistency that energy and that history all adds together to make this very dangerous entity that if it gets a sniff of blood they've experienced these hunts so often that they make sure that they don't let it slip away from them now navi currently started of the day in first place I'm just, I'm just going to paint a picture here. We got we got some time. G2 won their game in overtime days. Moved up from 12 to 14 points. BDS won their game in uh, regulation. That means they got three points. Put them up on 13. And Empire did the exact same thing. Also, 13 points for them. Navi. Well, they started off the day in first place with 12 points. Uh, meaning that if they would lose this, they would drop down from first to fourth. But at the same time, VP is within striking range, currently on nine points. And Vitality, if they would win, put themselves up onto ten points. Only two points away from Na'Vi. Meaning that the major spot is anything but confirmed at this point. Especially since they will still be facing teams like Empire and BDS. So... This game is very important for Na'Vi. They need to make sure they find a way back into it. And that is also part of why they just got that tech timeout. Now, as we're underway in the meantime, we have seen a little breach onto the CCTV wall. There is, of course, a player of Vitality playing quite close. I believe it's Bibu that is just waiting and hoping he's going to be able to pick up a kill as a result. Three drones waiting outside of the Jacuzzi wall. And Rise is actually the one that was roaming around. Has some of these Aruni laser gates set up on hatches to stop any drones from coming in. You might be wondering, like, why would you do that? Like, isn't that a waste of an Aruni? I don't think so. Like, if you use one of them to help you go on that roam to stop the information, SP4 gets another kill. It's Doki now dropped. The rest of Vitality is just going to drop back and fall back to the side. All five of them now in the basement. I think that's the sort of play here is they've spent so much time. They've sort of cleared themselves really far away. They have a large amount of exploration they can do. And, you know, it's a vitality that's really just putting Na'Vi into this very tricky situation. They've dropped that early body. They've been able to drive themselves further and further up the board at this point. And you always look towards how is vitality doing in terms of being stressed on the defense to cactus generally. Especially when he's on that maestro role of just sort of swinging the alder and seeing whose head they can yep. take off. And the fact that he hasn't really had to be this big part of playing any of these engagements, it just shows that Vitality's been able to sort of stress the rest of the map enough. It definitely has been. And you start in the round there as well. They managed to pick up the kill and everybody rotates down instantly. It's so good to see from them because they have that man advantage and they will be abusing it up to the maximum. Nixcaras will be used. Bibu has an impact, but will not be able to toss it into the corner, into the right place to try and impact trick the hatch due to the stun, of course, coming out. Will be not very helpful if you try and aim that the right way. Meantime, push from the main stairs coming through. Blur still on the kitchen hatch here, hoping to pick one up, finding a head onto one of these players who, of course, will be looking out for a drop themselves as well. 14 seconds left. P4 is getting hit in the meantime. Bibu comes in from the side, spots the second player down the main stairs. He's not going to be able to pick up that kill. 2v4 saves. He's now in a very sticky situation here with the diffuser. He needs to enter the side. There's not much time left. Blur will be able to open it up, however. The plant's going down in the meantime, but the cover drops, and there we go. They finish the kill. They're not going to take the risk. One of them was starting to move up. He's like, let me knife, let me knife. But we <laughs> saw how that happened or what happened when Trainhard back then 
try to go for the nice kill onto uh, Bride. Of course, was out of ammo with a shotgun and with his SMG. Had no other opportunity. But that turned into a Bride 1v2 clutch suddenly. And now we have ourselves five consecutive rounds for Vitality. It's going well. And you can obviously see there's a back line of a team. They're all in the same area. They're getting themselves sort of locked in and they've brought... I wonder what that plushie is. How do you not know what that plush is? Is it from Monster Inc? Yes. Yeah, I already thought. So I, was, I wasn't. I wasn't sure. I was just. I just wanted wow. to get confirmation. I thought it was John Goodman. Other, Other monsters are available. Other monsters we are available. Have to say that true. Mm -hmm. Like the the green one eyed. Who is yeah. it? Is it Kino that has a stitch plushie as well? I think so. Yeah. We need all of these animated plushie players to go up against each other and to work out. We need a show match between it's the... It's Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Parker that, that was technically honestly, has a koala. Yeah, but that's not animated. No, 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 but it's still a soft toy. I mean, I'm okay, reaching yeah. at a very limited base of people <laughs> that have soft toys attached to their setups. In the fact okay. that I'm also moving away from players and also including Parker. Yeah. He's not really player, indeed. No. He's like gold? I don't know. But in our hearts, he's diamond. A gold diamond. I have to keep the NA guys. No, no, I get it. I have, to make them I have to stay friends with the NA guys. We cannot start a war. I'm already <laughs> at war with Parker. Yes. So. Okay, yeah. Well, you both dressed the same. Um, yeah. And I know that there was some memes tweeted about that. It's like, who were winning best? so far. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, do you know who isn't winning currently? Navi, Navi. unfortunately. Five. Oh, vitality. And I guess the start of the point was they are all in the same space. They're in the same atmosphere. It can work wonders, especially when you have your back line of support who aren't allowed to talk. That's all obviously monitored. But still, it gives you that extra element of we're all sort of in this situation. It gives them an eye if they do need to use a tactical timeout of what they can talk about and how they can bring things together. So far, they don't need to. They're 5-0 up on their defenses, but most notably, they're looking like they have more and more control since that first round, which was seemingly Na'Vi's best chance at pulling some success has pretty much evaporated and Navi's found themselves a little bit lost in the water. They're trying to find one so they don't have to go through six rounds clutching on their defenses and hoping that they don't slip up once because so far Vitality have been very good at punishing those mistakes in those moments. Might be able to spot out defeat here if he finds the right angle. It's P4. Mena is uh, currently on fire, spotting out one player there. Goes for the pre-fire but loses his life. Exact same spot where Shaiko lost his earlier on. Different operators, same kind of feeling to it. And as both are doing exceptionally well, of course, before currently on that board. There's only a couple of Xkaros left. Nave is trying to bait out these Xkaros. The flashbangs are being tossed in, and that means the magnets are being wasted. But it, oh no, that, that's very unfortunate the way that popped. That is going to be very difficult to go through. I'm not sure if they know Maverick is banned, so they're not going to be able to uh, do that final bit of renovation on it. And Shinka's playing below as well, so has the opportunity to play some verticalities right on that breach. Yeah, he's looking for the angle in the holes here. The CC wall itself gets opened up. No. Does it? There it is. Just popped really late for some reason. Didn't think it was destroyed as we saw BB pull away. The smoke canister buys him a little bit of time, but there's about 50 seconds left. They're just going to wait for it to dissipate and then probably find themselves facing the second, if not the third. Cactus has them all ready in pocket. And there goes the second, buys them another 15, and is going to leave them with roughly around 20 seconds to try and make their final push, depending on the timing of how everything else comes together. There is still generally no long arm left outside of that, so they're going to sort of wait for the push to come through, but they're more than happy to meet them as the metric starts to bring itself together. With Rise still in control of at least one side, it saves that it's trying to isolate that body in the meantime. It would have to be a cool Rise. hole. Rise has the perfect opportunity here of shutting down whatever comes in, gets one kill. Shinka will be able to pick up one as well, and Cactus follows it up. It's only left to the two men on Na'Vi. One on the window, one on the plateau. Saves moves in, needs to get this Banshee, needs to get the Diffuser and start planting right now, as there is going to be another kill. Shinka, the last man left, he needs to push. There's no time, spots him out, gets the kill. It's 6-0 to zero for Vitality. 6-0, to zero. and how many of these rounds have ended where the planter was... There's just no time was for the Na'Vi. Last person. And they're stuck in the plant, and they're doing the right... You know, at that point, you're stuck in the plant, because if you don't, you lose the round. There's no yeah. two ways about it. There's that hope and that vain sliver that they miss you, and obviously there's generally always been at least one other person that tries to get the cover that hasn't quite won it, but... 
it is testament and it is sort of paramount that Navi is continually left with no time for a sort of change up. And it's not always that they do drive the diffuser in at the sort of final mark, but it is often that it gets dropped just on this sort of outskirts. And it's a vitality game that Navi has just did not find a way to break. The thing is, when you want to go for that push you just saw, you need to somehow deal with the player that is on the rafters because you have the perfect line of sight into everybody moving in from the bridge and from the door. You saw on there, he picked up one of the kills. The two members on red both managed to find one as well. And then you have a member on top of highway able to jump in CC window. You have a member on plateau. Now, one of them will be going in for that diffuser. The other one will be providing cover. But it only goes so far. As soon as that cover dies and the diffuser is going down, there is no time left in that case. And of course they did the right thing. The timer was about to hit zero. There was no way he was going to be able to find that final kill as they were too far re like removed from one another. So he had to go for that plant. You had to hope that your teammate would survive, which unfortunately was not the case. And here you see it again. Rice able to pick up the front. Shinka, the one on the back, and I believe it was uh, maybe Cactus to get one on the next to that as well. I'm not quite sure. Right away, three people in construction got picked up, and now Vitality 6-0. to Their first game back together in Stade de France under their boot camp, and so far it seems hyper successful. And if so, if they do manage to end this with a 7-0, I know we might not get there. Navi's on their defense, but it could always be an opportunity. And I'd say let's just keep them in Stade de France because that would be a success story. Well, it's not the most undoable task, but it does not mean it is in any way easy. As the push starts to come here across the long line, those charges are instantly dropped. The grenade comes through as well. It doesn't quite catch it, and either side of the wall will start to open the mix and the continual explosions are what cracks the CC wall. In the meantime, Doki has a bit of a hold on the loose side, so if they try and push from the alternate, they might be able to get it, but it seems like P4 has sacked himself at the bottom of Garage. They're going to try and drive themselves here as the second pick up, and it saves. That actually opens it up, takes care of Cactus, and puts the diffuser cold. That puts them in a situation where they can sort of build it up, but unlike Na'Vi, they have a minute 30 to try and get the revenge here. And if so, was a run out to come through. The drone will now give away a lot of the information. Ryzen P4 might be going for a bit of a double peek. Try and waste some of that utility. Follow it up with a grenade. However, it's often done from below. And Shinka currently is the man that finds himself below. There you have it. The uh, EMP will be tossed up, up in the window. That will take care. Oh, he misses it. Oh, That's no. opportunity, I believe he does to try and make sure that the ADSs would be disabled. The shots are coming in. There comes another stun. The grenade is being cooked and comes in high. That is going to bounce back, unfortunately, but he's going to be taken care of by Ryzen. The gunshots and Shinka is coming in from below as well. Three on four. Garage is under control. Are they going to be able to get this plan down and security 7-0 against Na'Vi? 2C4 is still in pocket, and, well, it's all down to them to try and see if they can make use as every bit of land that they've otherwise held has started to fall away. Nath also has the three canisters and the shield put to the top of red, so they can buy the time if they want. Saves wants to go on a rotate, and that's Shinka's job, to make sure that he cannot as Bibu goes to stick it in the close corners. They're aware, but it might be a little bit too Sometime. late as he sticks it. He gets the diffuser down, and he's able to, no, just caught at the very end of that. Another bit of a pickup. But in a post-plant situation, oh, no. it takes plays like that by Nath to drive Na'Vi a little bit closer. Rise has the long angle, has the pings on a double push, but can't shoot in two places at once. Na'Vi will not be 7 0 They may be starting something, but they still have a long way to go. It is a first step in a marathon, but it's at least a start. Managed to go for a great clutch there. The smoke canister took care of Bibu right after he got the plan down. So you're in a post plant in that case, but you still managed to bring it back to a man advantage. It was for the fact that the smoke was able to hit that shot with the SMG 11. Onto P4 who was on the cover. P4 who has been performing exceptionally so far. Not able to land that kill. Might have cost him the round. But it's just a single round for now. Just a single round for now. It could turn into more. And that is going to be the big question. Will it turn into more? One out of the six have been found. Five more to climb. 
It is a tall task, that, that is for sure. Na'Vi are definitely not the ones favored into the current matchup that we have. And they need to make sure that they play the best of their games to bring it back here. And, and we do see the cap can be in brother. You might be able to catch up one, two of those players that are, well, unknowingly walking through these traps. Bring them down to 40 to 60 HP, ease them up a little bit for the final execute. You know, when you can take them down as they drop these hatches. But besides that, setup looks pretty normal on the side of Navi. Well, maybe P4 does want this game to go on a little bit longer. I mean, you know, if Shaco's going to get, what, 18? And uh, Rask's going to hit 20. He needs a bit more time. 21. He needs a little bit more time if he wants to try and set his mantle onto this day of players absolutely popping off and really making the job of trying to find highlights just that little bit easier today. But Navi's day is still not, unfortunately, easy as they are starting to try and work out where the push is coming from. Saves is doubling down with the aggression. You see what is often an extended hold towards the top, and it seems like they're going to pull back because they've got the call that Rise is already pushing into dirt. Drives his way all the way in. He's going on a bit of an adventure. He's able to at least find one. Nath in the meantime catches on the back side. There's Blur suffering inside. Nath's on such a sliver of health. The impact finally drops the man behind the AK. So the sprayer over the top is trying to secure some semblance of safety. Vitality saw an opportunity tried to take it and almost did. But they're still building behind that. They've still got Blur exceptionally injured and they still have two minutes to try to formulate the rest of this round. This is that quick push coming into motion. You lose your, well, Thatcher, you lose your sledge. Those, of course, are operators you'd rather still have when you have to go for an execute, especially when you need to deal with utility and with verticality. Gonna be more difficult to deal with it now. The Twitch drone of P4 will be taking care of uh, the Goo Mine. Keeps the drone in position. So can temporarily disable the Banshee as the uh, Legion moves in. Doki will be able to shut down that Twitch drone as BB opens up the hatch but decides to move back into dirt. Trying to go for a little bit of a well, gambling game, of a distraction game. As P4 takes a bit of damage but deals some as well. Cactus slow creeping down towards blue to see if they can find anybody behind the generator box. But Na'Vi's not overextending their hand right now. You look at the health of Doki that's now exceptionally suffered, but so is P4. So it's seemingly blow for blow on either side. But it's Doki that's able to turn one of those into a kill. Looks for the second, can't quite connect. Doesn't want to go too wide because of the pressure that might come through from dirt. He's in a little bit of a danger sandwich here. And bullets are unfortunately the feeling right now as he keeps his head tucked down and he's trying to make sure that he doesn't end up too covered in the hot sauce of death. Otherwise, 40 seconds for them to see if they can build any from the rest of this utility, but it's P4 with a heck of a gun, tearing a heck of a song on the split side. Oh! And Blue, a fantastic take on the door. The spray and the drift around the head of Doki finally takes the bite, and they have 30 seconds. 30 seconds to try to collapse down on Blur. A big player, consistent, gets one, gets shot out. Vitality, get a quick three points. I was going to say, they could have gone for the plan there, but they decided to go for the kill as it was the more safe approach. And I might hear you think, how is it the more safe approach? But they knew exactly where he was, so they just moved in with two at the same time. And if one falls, the other one will get him from behind. Vitality with a 7-1, and you see them all huddling up right there. They're very happy about it. They get themselves a win. Navi get dropped down from first to fourth, and Vitality is suddenly in the chase.